Hey guys, it's Chaos Growing Up back with another deck opening. We're on to deck number 4 for our Dark Tiding series. Been pretty lucky with a couple of decks that we've been opening so far. The ratings have been relatively on par with decks of Keyforge. Let's take a look at what we got today. Okay, for today's deck we have the Absurdly Dusty Citizen. It's a Saurian, Star Alliance, and Logos deck. Let's get this open and see what we got. Just gonna slot this in here. Trying out a new format. Let me know what you guys think about the new format in the comment section below. All right, starting with Star Alliance, we have Shield You Later, three power, two armor creature. Shield You Later can be played as an upgrade instead of a creature with a text, this creature gains plus two armor. Science Officer King Ken, two power creature with elusive. After a player chooses an active house which matches no cards in play, steal one ember. Two copies of him. Rocketeer Triska, four power creature. While the tide is high, Rocketeer Triska's neighbors enter play ready. Officer's Blaster, it's an upgrade, ember whenever you play it. This creature gets plus two power. And this creature gains destroyed. Attach Officer's Blaster to this creature's right neighbor. Grand Alliance Council. It's an action. Choose a creature of each house. Destroy each creature not chosen. CR Officer Hawkins. Two power creature with deploy. Play. Gain one amber for each of CR Officer Hawkins non-star alliance neighbors. Amberback. It's an upgrade. Play. Raise the tide. This creature gains at the start of your turn. If the tide is high, capture two amber. Static Collision Array. It's an artifact, and one of you play it. Your keys cost minus one amber while the tide is high, and plus one amber while the tide is low. Lay of the Land. Amber one of you play it. It's an action. Look at the top three cards of your deck and put them back in any order. Draw a card. Agent Septia. Four power creature with Fight Reap. Deal one damage to a creature. If the tide is high, stun that creature. Professor Emeritus Kering, it's a one power creature with deploy. Play Fight Reap, use one of Professor Emeritus Kering's neighbors. If the tide is high, also use his other neighbor. Cool. That's it for Star Alliance. Moving on to Saurians, we have Medicus Lacus, five power creature. While the tide is high, you may spend amber on friendly creatures as if it were in your pool. Lapisaurus, 4 power creature with 2 armor, when taunt. While attacking Lapisaurus, enemy creatures gain. Before fight, exalt this creature. 2 copies of Lapisaurus. Crushing Charge, it's an action. Destroy each creature with power 4 or lower, gain 1 chain. Carpe Venum, it's an action. Exalt 2 enemy creatures. Wipe Clear, Amber whenever you play it, it's an action. Deal 1 damage to each creature, destroy each upgrade. Dino you didn't. Amber whenever you play it, it's an action. Destroy an enemy creature with Amber on it. Works with that exalt. City State Interest, it's an action. Each friendly creature captures 1 Amber. Bestiary Urso, it's a 5 power creature with play Reap. You may unstun a creature. Two copies of him. Ankylo Formation. Remember when you play it, it's an action. Choose one. For the main of the turn, a friendly creature gains skirmish. Or exalt a friendly creature. For the main of the turn, each friendly creature gains skirmish. Cool. Brachinalia. It's an artifact. Amber whenever you play it. Put four amber on Brachinalia in the common supply. A friendly creature captures one amber. At the start of each player's turn, if that player controls four or more creatures with amber on them, move each amber from Brachinalia to that player's pool. That's it for Saurians. Moving on to Logos, we have Talmage Steelheart. It's a three power creature. Give Talmage Steelheart a plus one power counter for each card you played this turn, including this one. Two copies of him. A lot of duplicates in this deck. Static Discharge is an upgrade. Amber whenever you play it, this creature gains at the start of your turn. Deal two damage to each of this creature's neighbors. 
phase shift, it's an action, you may play a non-Logos card this turn. Final analysis, it's an action, destroy each creature. Each player draws a card for each creature they control that was destroyed this way. Australis Seaborg, 4 power creature with reap, deal 2 damage to a creature. If this damage destroys that creature, raise the tide. Archon's Callback, it's an action with Omega. Play, draw 5 cards. Tide Warp, it's an artifact, Amber whenever you play it. At the start of your turn, if the tide is high, your opponent raises the tide. Otherwise, you raise the tide. Groundbreaking Discovery. It's an action, Amber whenever you play it. If you control Dr. Proctor, Rooftop Laboratory, and Reckless Experimentation, destroy each card in play, unforge an opponent's key, and purge Groundbreaking Discovery. There's Reckless Experimentation. This creature gains Reap. Play the top card of your deck. Rooftop Laboratory. It's an artifact. Each friendly scientist creature enters play ready. Wow. And finally, we have Dr. Rockter, two power creature with elusive. Reap, put an upgrade or action card from your discard pile on top of your deck. Okay, so if he has reckless experimentation, that'd be really cool. That is it for this deck. Let's move on. All right, looking at the key parts of this deck, we have two copies of Science Officer King Ken. Uh, for those extra steals and house calling dependent amber control. Rocketeer Triska, Seer Officer Hawkins, and Professor Emeritus Kering all work kind of in the same way that depend on the neighbors. And then finally we have Static Collection Array. It's helpful when you have the tide and hurts you when you lose the tide. So I don't like the double-edged items. Um, I mean it keeps the game balanced but it's not as OP, obviously. So that's another important part. I put up Amber Vac as well, as it's one of the important cards in this deck that help you affect the tide, since we do have several things that rely on that tide. Medicus Lacus being another card. Um, using Amber that's on your creatures, that's pretty important, especially in a Saurian house. Now, the cards in this house are uh, for this deck are a little lacking in that approach. Um, so it's a bit of a mismatch of cards that don't have a singular direction in mind. So while it gives you options, it also is difficult to make happen because the cards aren't really all there to support it. Lapisaurus, um, we have two copies, great taunts, and causes your opponent to generate amber on their creatures for you to take, which doesn't work as well. Uh, similar to the Carpe action card, which exalts your enemy creatures. Um, both those cards work well with the dino you didn't, creating targets for that card. However, it doesn't synergize well with the Brechanalia, where that's four extra amber potential swing that will probably go to your opponent if they utilize your Lapisaurus's effect. With bigger creatures that will survive the fight, of course, or creatures with skirmish and the exalts that they get from your cards so that kind of is anti-synergistic but otherwise there are cards there's quite a bit of wipes in this deck that uh, will allow you to get that amber back pretty quickly so overall medicus lack is while it's an important card generally for any sanctum house it's a little lackluster here in this deck so you're kind of more focused on generating amber by exalting your opponent's creatures using uh, the three cards that we mentioned. Now, the two copies of Bestiary Urso um, that help you unstun creatures, there isn't too much stun involved on your own side, so again, not a card that's gonna net you much value other than being a large body on the board. So, yeah, I put that out there just because there's two copies. Anytime there's multiple copies, that's one of our focal points of the deck, but in this case it's not really playing into the strengths of the house at hand. Finally moving on to Logos, we have Tom Lodge, two copies of him, so he's got potential to be a big creature. Australis Seaborg is another card that affects the tide with its reaps, and of course if you can destroy creatures using two damage. 
tide warp is a card that consistently changes the tide so it's going to be very situational whether you want to play that and then we have the dr Rockter set so looking at the abilities of all these cards they are all pretty strong dr Rockter lets you put a card from your discard pile to your top of your deck with the reap ability and then if he was to be equipped with the reckless experimentation you could then play that card right away since you determine the order of the uh, reap effects rooftop laboratory uh, if you had all these cards in hand at the same time then it would be great to play that artifact first so your rocker comes in ready uh, you equip the reckless experimentation you immediately be able to play a card from your discard pile and then finally bound baking discovery it's a big wipe and can backtrack your opponent's progress, which is great. Uh, probably the first card of that kind where it's a permanent effect versus things like break key um, that make your opponent unforge a key but get an back, so it could technically reforge right away. And just showing you the final analysis on the side there, just showing that this deck has quite a bit of wipes, so it's not really dependent on having a board state. All in all, looking at what this deck has, there's a lack of Amber Control, so I'm going to rate it at about a 62. That's it for this deck. Again, let me know how you guys like the format, if it's better this way or if the old format was better. Just let me know. And hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel for more uh, Keyforge videos like this. So, I'll see you guys in the next video, and as always, be kind and happy forging.